Holding the individual as the fundamental atom of society, as that foundation of society, has some repercussions that I think that you're going to recognize. So I'd like to talk to them a little bit, talk to you a little bit about them today, about what it means to put an individual at the core of our decision making. The first repercussion that I think you might notice is called uh, communal erosion. When we place more value on the individual, it emphasizes a separation as opposed to community. Our culture, for the most part, as I'm sure you recognize, is a culture of isolation. We do not know our neighbors. There's an emphasis on doing more, faster, no time for being in relationship, no time for being for just the sake of being. We have to work really hard to counteract that. And technology has led us to less developed interpersonal skills. But we cannot forget that no human being exists outside of relationship. We are connected to a family, to a church, to our food, to a community, to the nation, to the world, to the environment. And we need one another to hold us accountable, to help us understand ourselves, and to help us see how we are experienced in the world. We need one another for our own survival. Now, philosophically, if the individual is prized as the fundamental building block, then all that is not self is other. And so morally, the fundamental question becomes, will this help me or hurt me? Will this other benefit me or not? So when we put the needs of the individual at the forefront of our decision making, our relationships are minimized and devalued to profit or gain. Why remain friends with somebody if they're not doing anything for you? Right? Why remain married if your wants and needs are being stifled, even in the slightest bit? That's the kind of cultural expectation that happens when we put individual first. Why take the time to be interested in other people or even courteous if there's nothing in it for us? Now you can see the repercussions also in our business culture. This individualist view has nearly become synonymous with business life. In the service of expanding profits, anyone can be sacrificed at any time. When the world turns instrumental to the individual's needs, no one can be trusted. And that is a terrible way to live. Can you imagine this world? Do you see it? You don't really have to imagine it, I don't think, because to a certain extent, if you aren't living in it right now, you have lived in it. Or in your own professional life or in past relationships, you've encountered this worship of the individual. Maybe you've served as a pawn in someone else's game. Now that is, to some extent, why I believe we come to church. To remember. To remember that this is not how the world needs to be. That we do not have to live isolated and distrustful and suspicious. And we don't have to be used. Now another consequence of this idolatry, I'm calling it, of the individual, what I've also been calling this new totalitarianism, is also the exploitation of nature. You see, people are not the only instruments available to serve the needs of the individual. Nature can also be seen in the same light and evaluated in the terms of benefits or threats. Now, this has led to our natural resources being pillaged, animal species being eradicated, all from a posture of instrumental expansion, more growth, more gain, more profit. All of the decisions made not with the context of the community involved. Now, in this narcissistic worldview that accompanies this new totalitarianism, the individualist is likely to see all relationships to people or organizations as restraints, 
personal restraints on their freedom. The individualist is likely to see values as merely opinions or prejudices. And they're likely to see customs or traditions as just imposing on them. Now, though our goal may be to raise independent thinkers, to help our children discover their own preferences and wants and desires and aspirations, there is a tension that is necessary to keep the idolatry of the individual at bay. And this tension is even mentioned in our very own child dedication words. We dedicated a small child at 10 o'clock, and in those words this morning, we referred to the age of discretion when he or she will be able of his or her own will to acknowledge his or her duty to God and to humanity. When they're able of their own will to acknowledge their duty to God and to humanity. 